Well, Nolan, thanks so much for joining me for Giving Day 2023. So I know your family has a really <laughs> long Camp Mac history and connection, but <laughs> what are some of your earliest Camp Mac memories? I think the first memories that I can think of of Camp Mac are um, for um, grandparents' camp um, that um, I have been told the McBride triplets are responsible for the age requirement, minimum age requirement for grandparents' camp going up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I, the first time I can remember going to that then I could remember going to camp before or okay. this is camp sort of normal thing, but like, it's sort of, I have a vague memory of going to, um, I don't know how old I would have been very young yeah. uh, with my grandparents. It was before my grandpa, um, Roush died. So I would have been under four, um, hmm. going, going to Ulrich, yeah. um, and m getting into, um, helping move things into, move things in yeah. <laughs> as much as I could at that age um to the room there uh with uh both sets of grandparents and my siblings and a first cousin on the McBride side of the family cool. um and that was something that we did until we were too old to go as mm -hmm. grandkids <laughs> okay so after you were too old though that didn't stop coming to camp did it <laughs> no because then we signed up for uh was it samplers then mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. so samplers uh and then did camp every year um through up through the different levels through uh high school um during middle school i did the creative arts camp which mm -hmm. is how we met yep. <laughs> and um and then um every year since um, high school I've been back in some form even if it's just to visit and walk around for a day mm -hmm. um I've been a camp counselor multiple times especially one summer in college I did a ministry summer service the Church of the Brothers um, ministry exploration program um, as an intern at Camp Mac I so I did six straight weeks of counseling which was Ooh. A lot of fun and amazing, and I never want to do again. Yep, yep. <laughs> I was like, okay, these are the camps I like. Well, I liked all of them, but of course, <laughs> these are the camps that <laughs> I would be willing to counsel again. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, and then after that, I did, um, I worked with, um, finishing the out that term after I did all of the all the weeks there were brother camps. I then also worked with, uh, summer staff um and did that side uh -huh. uh, my brother and sister both were on summer staff through most if not all of college yeah um and I've also um been a counselor for the Episcopal um youth camp um in would have been 2021 I believe uh -huh. yes so uh, which was <laughs> when you were a summer camper obviously you loved camp because you kept coming back <laughs> <laughs> um, but what were some of your favorite activities, the things that you wanted to see on the schedule and were excited <laughs> to see? Well, wouldn't surprise anyone to know me that I loved swimming in um, swimming in the lake. Uh, I remember being really frustrated with my counselors about having to have, have um, rest time before swim time. And then when I became a counselor, I was like, thank God for rest time. How did I have energy at this time of day? Uh, but, um, and so like the worst punishment that we could get for misbehaving was having to extend rest time um, and have less swim time, which then horribly confused me when I was a counselor and tried to do that and had campers who actually enjoyed rest time. <laughs> I still don't understand that, but, um, but yeah, um, what really drew me to, um, well, I loved hiking back to the Living Cross, um, 
especially in my family, um, my grandfather, my mother's dad, uh, my grandpa Roush is buried um, at Milford graveyard, mm. um, not far from the living cross. Mm. Um, so obviously we wouldn't go there as a camp because that would yeah. be off cat property and dangerous. And <laughs> it was only important to me uh, or my siblings, but um, knowing that grandpa was nearby Mm -hmm. uh, was important and I can remember going with my grandmother to go visit grandpa's grave and then continue walking to go around to visit the living cross mm -hmm. um, which was a very important to me yeah camping then you talked a little bit about going into the counseling side of it and especially <laughs> your summer of being the super counselor and doing all of that um yeah. I have found that a lot of people have kind of favorite age groups to work with um, mm -hmm. because working with a first and second grader is very different than a middle schooler. Mm -hmm. So do you have a preferred age group to work with? I would, middle school would be the yeah. age that I would, I am happy to work with any group. Middle mm -hmm. school would be where I um, default to. Um, I haven't, I haven't had the opportunity to be a counselor at youth camp, so I can't yeah. <laughs> speak to that. Um, but um, it's not that I don't enjoy working with the younger children, mm -hmm. um, but it's nice to work with um, campers who are old enough to be able to take care of themselves in some ways. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, but are also, they're not, not old enough to think they're too cool to be doing whatever we're doing at camp <laughs> yeah and then you said in 20 somewhat recently yep. you've been the counselor for the episcopal camp mm -hmm. this year what were yep. some of the big differences and in, in that experience versus a camp mac program <laughs> camp well for me it felt extremely surreal because um like i had done I've been to other brethren camps. I was um, the last youth peace travel team. Um, so I had had the experience of going to other camps and go seeing how other camps do things differently and the way Camp Mac does things is not the way all the brethren camps do things. And then suddenly I was at Camp Mac, somewhere I've been going literally longer than I've been alive and was also the new person who didn't know how things were run. <laughs> um, and... Um, like some of it was like fairly superficial things like um, the uh, Episcopal camps always refer to Quinter Miller as the Q, um, which is shorter and makes sense if you're not trying to teach campers mm -hmm. who Quinter Miller were, um, Quinter Miller were, um, and all of the brother names aren't as meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so some of it was just reevaluating language or um, having been used to being the unofficial official camp song leader, mm. suddenly we're doing either new songs that I don't know or songs mm. that I know in a different way. Um, but also just, um, it's a, they're both church camps, um, yeah. but it is a different structure. The Episcopalians use their own curriculum that they develop uh, different mm -hmm. than what the um, camp mac uses um yeah for their theme which they have is really most of the present fun themes uh, yeah. yeah the so, year i counseled the theme was uh thy kingdom mm. uh, so it was all medieval themed and we had oh, medieval skits cool. and um and we just get every day which i'm sure you will be shocked to hear i was <laughs> recruited <laughs> into at one point mm -hmm. um very cool. So you've gotten to experience camp in a number of ways. Is there something that you've done here at Camp Mac that you think is a hidden gem? Well, I'm not sure that I can call uh, Schultz Chapel a hidden gem, but uh, it is definitely something that I, whenever I have the opportunity to be at camp, I like to go and just have some private, um, quiet time in there overlooking the lake. Um, and also as, as someone who uh, studied history at Manchester, um, 
I love to go through um, and walk the murals mm -hmm. in Quinter Miller, uh, and especially to um, when I have been a counselor for Brethren camps, I usually try and make an effort to do a mural tour. Um, I I hope my campers <laughs> enjoy them. I, I given that it's in my interest, I do tend to <laughs> run a bit long. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, so those are some of the, maybe not the big things like going swimming mm -hmm. or walk, go, doing the climbing wall and um, all those um, major camp activities that we would think about, but are some more quiet contemplative um, stuff that yeah. I find meaningful. So now you're at the spot, you're in seminary, you're preparing <laughs> to become a Episcopalian priest. Uh, did Camp Mac have any influence on your calling to that ministry? Definitely. Um, definitely Camp Mac was um, a major uh, part of my um, formation as a child um, in faith. Um, it was the place where I was baptized um, and a place where I experimented with discerning um, a call to ministry uh, through ministry summer service, through being a counselor, um, through um, all of the programs that Camp Mac has done. Um, and it is a place that continues to mean a lot to me um, and that I hope to continue to be involved with um, as long as I can. <laughs> nice. So with um, camp, it, you mentioned that you were here before you were born. Um, I've met a fair number of people like that. <laughs> <laughs> Did your parents meet or get married here at camp? Both my parents and my uh, maternal grandparents met at Camp Mac. Oh. Um, so... My parents, um, my parents were on summer. I think officially they met, the story is something like one of them was the counselor for the other's cousin who they were dropping off. Mm -hmm. uh, but my parents were uh, on summer staff together uh, while they were students at Manchester. Uh, and the story goes that um, they were supposed to go with a third friend um, to the St. Joe County Fair Mm -hmm. uh, and this third friend dropped out at the last minute and that became my parents' first date. Um, <laughs> and I believe my parents can still recite from memory what the um, daily meals were for <laughs> each day <laughs> that summer. Um, and then my grandma, um, my grandma and grandpa Roush, um, I don't know that story quite as well, mm -hmm. I but I believe... Um, like they knew each other vaguely from or had seen each other around Manchester okay. um, but like really started uh, talking and getting to know each other at camp mm -hmm. I would assume on one of the uh, Manchester Camp Mac days but I don't know that for sure <laughs> yeah cool and my mother grew up um, across the lake from camp oh, so yeah. like my um, uh I used to, before grandma um, remarried um, and moved in with my grandpa Bill and Elkhart, we used to like go and mm -hmm. um, go sledding down the hill and swimming in the lake. And that's why we could walk over to mm -hmm. grandpa's grave into the living cross so easily. Uh, and that's still a house that I look for every time uh, yeah. I go to visit camp. <laughs> fun, fun. So last time I saw you here at camp, you were mm -hmm. helping renovate Ulrich House. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. That's when I think of you just personality wise, I think <laughs> of you as the counselor and the spiritual side. So what was it like being able to help out on that side of things? Well, it was exhausting, but fun. <laughs> uh, I was happy that I got to be there on a day where I got to smash through a wall Um Again, I'm sure people who know me are not surprised by that. Um, but it was really good. Um, my I went with my brother. Um, it was really good to spend a day um, giving back to camp, um, helping to renovate a place that, excuse me, 
as I said earlier, is connected to some of my earliest memories of camp to know that that's going to continue to be used and to hopefully be better than ever um, as a place for camp uh, to utilize going into the future. Um, I am, yeah, it was <laughs> a lot of work, but <laughs> good work. Um, and I believe that that is part of um, camp's tradition going back to when it was first founded. Grandpa McBride um, will periodically point to one of the stones on the top of Sarah Major's chimney and tell me that he was the one to put that stone there. <laughs> so <laughs> cool. So that really segues well into my next question. What is some of your hopes and dreams for the future of Camp Mac? I hope that um, Camp Mac continues to be a place that can provide the kind of experiences I had for um, campers to go to, uh, to spend time in nature, to spend time having fun, uh, making friends, uh, and to learn about Jesus um, and what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Um, Camp Mac was always one of my highlights of the summer, and I hope that it can continue to be that for more kids um, continuing on to my own children and grandchildren um, and so on. Um, and I'm excited um, to see how it's continued to you um, to be used, not just for brethren camps, but for um, people of all backgrounds um, over the summer and up for other events, retreats and so on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Awesome. Do you have any especially fond memories or stories that you want to share? Moments that just stick with you? So I'm talking about how much camp is connected to my family. Um, I'm thinking of right now my grandma's second uh, wedding. Um, when grandma, my grandma Roush, uh, Rosemary, yeah, grandma Roush, Grandma Rosemary married my grandpa Bill. Um, it was in Becker, shortly before Becker burned down. Um, and I remember um, all of the kids, all of the grandkids that were old enough to talk <laughs> at yeah. that point um, were involved. And we each had a verse from love is patient, love is kind. We each had our own verse for um, the service. I don't remember what my verse was, <laughs> but... Um, Camp Mac for me is full of all kinds of memories of doing puppeteering for mm -hmm. <laughs> about the only times I've ever done it. Uh, and the first time I helped put together a worship service, um, spending time with members of my family, um, being baptized, um, having Sunday services for Camp Mac Sunday with my congregation and having a meal out um, in one of the picnic shelters. Mm -hmm. um, the joys of um, when, uh, the, the year that we set up a temporary tent outside um, after Becker um, burned down to have a place to eat. Well, thank you so much for all you've done for Camp Mac and for sharing the stories and we look forward to seeing you here again soon. My pleasure. Thank you very much.